I am in Beijing, China, and in this video I'm going to visit China's forbidden city. Okay, the security tells me I need to follow them. I will also visit two more super famous places and try the most famous Chinese dish. But I heard that it can be quite stressful to visit famous places in China, as they are usually very crowded and you need to buy tickets online days in advance. Please show your appointment record. Do we need an appointment to enter here? Is that really going to be the case? Will it still be enjoyable? Join me and let's explore China's capital. Okay, and we are going to start at one of the most most famous places in China at the Great Wall of China. And yeah, I'm just about to enter the cable car to go up to the wall. It's currently about minus three degrees, so this is pretty cold here as well. Okay, a cable car up to the Chinese wall. Anyone afraid of heights here? Uh, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> oh, pretty fast. Oh, but it looks beautiful now with the yeah. snow. I actually feel exciting to go up here now. I mean, yeah. this is the Great Wall of China, one of the most famous places in the world. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. So this has been on my list for a long time to visit. Do you agree? Do you also feel excited yeah, 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 to be here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I just met these guys here on the ground because they were looking as clueless as I was, <laughs> trying to find uh, the ray. Friend in need is friend indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so you're from Lebanon? I'm from Lebanon. Belarus? Uh, Russia and Russia. And Russia and Dubai. Dubai yeah. You yeah. live in Dubai. Yeah. That is uh, much warmer than it is here now. Oh, uh, yeah, in theory, back. it is possible also to walk up here. But uh, there was a guy down there recommending us to not walk because he said it's like three hours. Oh, that's it? That's it already? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was literally like three minutes. Yeah. And yeah, I actually have a mission for today. So throughout the video, we are going to visit three super famous places. The Great Wall is the first one. And I have the goal, I want to take a beautiful picture in front of all these three famous places. So throughout this video, I want to collect three pictures. Oh, but first you have to walk quite a long tunnel here. And I'm just realizing that maybe it is too foggy today to actually see the wall. Because I could imagine that usually you can see the wall from here already. But now everything is covered in fog. Oh, it seems to be very slippery here. Oh yeah, this is like uh, like ice here. So you need to be careful here, walking up here. Here it is, guys, the Great Wall of China. And it looks very steep and very slippery. Wow, this is a great moment for me. A world famous place, and now for the first time seeing it with your own eyes. I love moments like this. Oh, it looks very steep, actually. Okay, I think he said, move on, move on. That was just a guess. Okay, the goal is now to make it to the top of the Great Wall, to admire the views and get the one picture that I want. But getting up there was pretty intense. And I know usually it doesn't look that steep on camera, but let me tell you, this is pretty steep. Careful. Yeah, right? Look how they are going down here. Oh, oh is this the worst day to visit the Great Wall? I'm not sure. Check it out. They're just sliding down here. <laughs> oh, she seems to be a bit scared. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> oh, this is great actually. I think the good thing about uh, coming on a day like this, where you don't have uh, the best visibility and it's cold, it's snowing, that probably reduces the amount of people here a lot. Because you can imagine a world famous place like this, especially in China, is often very crowded. Whew. This is pretty cool. Although it is pretty freezing here, but as long as you keep moving, you actually don't really feel the cold that much. Oh, but check it out. It gets significantly more busy up there. Okay, this is the busy part, but it's not as steep and the stairs are not as uh, high here anymore. So it seems to be a bit easier to walk. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Ni <laughs> Where are you from? Oh, where are you? You are uh, China? Yeah. From China? China. Okay, okay. I am from Germany. Are you stuck there? Uh, yeah, I am stuck <laughs> for the last five minutes. Well, for some reason, uh, nobody's moving up. This kind of looks like the stairway to heaven, right? Because we are basically walking into the right cloud. And I can't even see the end from here. This is interesting. Look how tilted the walls are here. I'm wondering if this is just because it happened over the, the years or if they actually built it tilted like this or if the original position was more like this, you know. And very interesting, like keep in mind that this was built I think over 2000 years ago. So people were building it in this position and it's still standing here so many years later. But yeah, you need to have a little bit of patience to go up here. Keep in mind, this is a not so good weather day. Imagine this in good weather conditions. Interesting view here. Oh, I just met some Chinese people here who can speak German. Uh, low Chinese people. <laughs> Korea. You're from Korea. Korea. <laughs> ah, Korean people. But she was just saying Danke. And what was the word you said? Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Yeah. Good day, good morning. Bihi, bihi. 
What, what's right? that? I love you. Ah, ich liebe dich. Ich liebe dich. Ich liebe dich. You can teach me one word in Korean. One word? Annyeong. Uh, Annyeong? That's Anyang. hello, right? Yes. Annyeong? Annyeong. Uh, Annyeong? Yeah. You come to visit China? Hey, China is the uh, second time. Second time in China? Yeah. First time Great first Wall? First time, no. Uh, yes, first time in China. Ah, okay, okay. You first time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you like it? I'm, oh, I'm very interested. It's beautiful. How about eh? you? Oh, it looks very nice. Mm -hmm. You first time? Although the weather is not so good today, yeah. but I like it. It looks uh, still beautiful. Okay, and it's slippery here again now. You see, I, I have almost no grip here with my shoes. Yeah, so here you really need to hold on here because yeah, I'm literally just slipping uh, slipping down here again. Yeah, you can go. Sure, sure, sure. Hold on. Okay, so this is the part that is causing the jam because it's very steep and very slippery here. So this is slowing everything down. But yeah, have a look behind me. I think I spent over half an hour just in uh, this part here now. You can help me? Yeah. Ah. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, hold on to the rails and then you can go up there. <laughs> oh, careful, careful. The, the boy there is deciding to go on his own. And I think the dad is worried. Oh no, I should concentrate on walking now, not on talking. Okay. Whew, this is intense here. <laughs> okay, I need both hands now. Yeah, this is the section that uh, slows everything down. Causing the jam. Okay, so we have a, a tower here. I think they are called Watchtower. So I think what they did here is they, they closed it because usually I'm pretty sure you you were able to walk through and then uh, continue walking on the wall because here yeah, the, the total length of the wall is uh, 21,000 kilometer stretching all uh, around the area here. And the main purpose of the wall was to protect the Chinese from the from the Mongols coming from the northern parts. In theory, when the weather is clear, you can probably see the wall stretching all uh, over the mountains here. But to be honest, I kind of enjoy it, especially because of the, this weather conditions, you know. You never let the weather ruin your experience. If you're in a place like this, not everything has to be perfect in order to be worth seeing. And yeah, I just took the first picture of the day. So this is the first out of the three pictures that I want to take in this video. Yeah, so after I got the picture and admired the views a little bit, it was time to head down again. Oh, some people are sliding down here. Oh. <laughs> And check it out, what food are they selling on the Great Wall of China? What do you think? What would you expect to be sold here? It is hamburger and french fries and uh, fried chicken. And then I headed back to Beijing for the next famous place. And I am now in the city center of Beijing, about to visit the second out of the three famous places in this video, the Tiananmen Square, which is not only the largest square in the world, but also a very famous place here in China. You have probably seen the square before or heard about it. Whenever China is having like a big parade or big celebrations, it's usually at this square. Okay, so the square should be about 100 meters in front of me. And there's also this famous building, which we are going to have a closer look at as well. And this is the main road here, which seems to be a very big road. I see at least one, two, three, four lanes on each side, maybe even more. And then also a big part here for the bicycles. And yeah, as you can imagine, the area around here looks very well maintained, very clean. But that actually is no surprise anymore for me in China. You probably have seen my previous China videos as well. Basically every place, especially the tourist places, the famous places, they all look very tidy and clean and well maintained. And that is also the case of course here. And there's a lot of security here. This is already the third checkpoint that I have to pass. Okay, so you do need to have an appointment slash ticket to enter the square, which to my understanding, you need to book at least one day in advance. So yesterday my hotel staff helped me to do that. But the, the ticket or the appointment was free of charge for this place. And yeah, one hour later and I just visited the Tiananmen Square. But unfortunately, I just learned that I am not allowed to film the square and put it inside a YouTube video. You are allowed to film there, but only for personal usage. So I didn't know that before, but yeah, I just learned that. So if you are a YouTuber coming to Beijing, just that you know, you're not allowed to put the Tiananmen Square inside a YouTube video unless, that's what I have been told, you have a special permit. But to be honest, I'm not sure how to get the permit and it's probably a lot of hassle. So I am of course going to respect that I am not allowed to put that square in the YouTube video, but I can tell you it was a very impressive square, the largest square in the world. So it was really cool to see that with my own eyes. And most importantly for today's video, I was able 
to get the second out of the three pictures for this video. And yeah, before we're heading now to the last place, the Forbidden City, I'm actually quite hungry. And there's one specific dish here in Beijing that everyone who comes here has to try. So let's see if I can find that. And yeah, some general first impressions of Beijing that I have. So this is now the third city I'm visiting in China, in Chinese mainland, after Shanghai and after Guangzhou. And to be honest, also here, this is a city of over 20 million people, but it doesn't feel like that because the roads are not chaotic everything seems to be well organized everything looks clean and decent here so this right here is the city center but it doesn't feel like the city center of a city with over 20 million people and also here most of the cars are electric or many of them at least but i do see a difference here compared to shanghai for example shanghai overall uh, seemed to be more modern everything was newer and there were more like huge skyscrapers and super modern buildings i haven't really seen that in beijing here yet so here we have like a lot of these uh, typical residential buildings here I'm just walking into a random small alley and there's a there's a smell of of something being grilled in the air you know yeah okay okay mm. okay thank you see you, see you. All right. Uh, okay. 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 Looks like I can eat duck here. Traditional hanging method. Fruits wood used for roasting in old Chinese country art. But minimum order size one whole duck. That might be a problem. I don't think I can eat a whole duck. Do you have a small portion for eating the duck? She was pointing to this dish right here, which is one duck for one way of eat include duck pancake, duck sauce, spring onion and cucumber. Is that a good portion for one person? This is for, for yes. one person? Yeah. yeah. 273. Pay now. Pay now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think this is going to be a very expensive meal. It was 273 yuan now. To be honest, I think that's quite pricey. But uh, maybe this is a famous restaurant here. So let me know in the comments if this is a normal price for this meal. I feel like this is an expensive place. Yeah, I do have this little uh, translation device with me now, which I have been using since I arrived in China. It's called Time Kettle. And this uh, specific model here is the T1 Mini. And this is actually pretty helpful. Like uh, you saw me just speaking into it and then it translates into Chinese immediately. And there's also a camera function here. So in this case, I don't really need it because the menu is also in English here. But yeah, many of the restaurants ones in China do not have an English menu so then I can just translate it here so I take a picture and then in this case I have put it to English so Chinese to English so it get translates into English and yeah maybe you think now why don't I just use my phone for translations but yeah the thing is if you have a long travel day you're out exploring a new place it is actually pretty good if you can save the battery of your phone for as long as possible so if you constantly have to get your phone out to get translation services done that can empty the battery pretty fast so I actually like to have a separate device for that which is not using my phone's battery and also the most popular translation device that most people have on their phone is not working in China it is blocked here and you can use it if you have a VPN but I can tell you from my personal experience now that even if you have a VPN in China it's not really reliable it doesn't work 100% of the time and yeah I just don't like the feeling of being potentially stuck somewhere because I don't have a working translation device on my phone and also sometimes you don't really feel comfortable to give your phone away to strangers in order to speak into the device. So I actually think it's pretty handy if you have an extra separate device for translation services. And yeah, this device currently offers 37 different languages with 88 accents. And yeah, you can use this device even without being connected to Wi-Fi. It comes with one year free global data. So even if you don't have a local SIM card or you don't have Wi-Fi, you can still use it. So if you are traveling to a new country where you don't speak the local language, I think this is a very useful device. Or if you have friends or family members who are going abroad soon this would also be a great gift for them i think and yeah they also have other devices available you can check it out all on their website if you would like to check it out as well you can click the link in the description okay i do have duck in front of me now i'm not sure if this is already everything i order it so we do have delicious smelling duck meat here then uh, some cucumbers and i'm not sure what this is actually and this is i think soy sauce and then i have the hot water here which by the way if you go into a chinese restaurant in germany this is one of the most popular dishes to get there. Okay, thank you. And I got a little bit of pancake as well on the side. So this actually looks like, a, almost like a roti shanai in Malaysia. Thin pancakes like this. Oh, I got a second part. Oh, yeah, okay, maybe this is a bit too much for me. Okay, but first things first, let's try the delicious duck meat. Okay, first time trying Beijing duck in Beijing. Oh, wow. 
wow. This is amazing. I can already say this is the best Beijing deck I ever had. The meat is so soft and tender. It's almost melting on my tongue. And then the outside part here, it feels like this is glazed with something and it's very crispy. How do I eat this? I put it inside here. Trying to eat the correct local way. Ah, you do it like this. Okay. Ah, so you basically make like your own wrap out of it. Okay. Thank you so much. Shishi. Yeah. But yeah, this seems to be the, the proper way of eating this. So you roll it like a little wrap basically. Let's try it like this. Oh yeah, now we have all the flavors combined. The fresh flavor from the vegetables together with the delicious soy sauce, the delicious duck meat, and then these very thin pancakes. They don't really add a lot of flavor to it, to be honest. But the overall combination in my mouth now tastes really good. And then basically use the meat to spread the, the sauce on the pancake together with the cucumbers and then these uh, onions. Okay, and just like that, I have done it by myself. Pretty easy once you know how to do it. Please let me know in the comments if this is the most common way to eat it or just one way out of many ways. Okay, I am almost done now and to be honest, at the end, uh, towards the end, it gets actually a little bit too oily for me. The pieces here are actually quite oily, which is uh, okay for me at the beginning. Like the first plate was totally fine, but then after a while it gets a little bit too oily for me. Thank you very much. Okay, bye bye. Oh, check it out. I think many famous people have been here. The famous movie star, the famous movie star. I don't really know these people, but maybe some of you know. Actors, the famous movie star. Oh, I know this guy, Jet Li. Oh, he has been here as well. Okay, so I do think that I stumbled up on a very famous place by accident here. Maybe that explains the high price. Because this was the most expensive meal I ever ate in China. So let me know in the comments if this is a normal price for this type of meal. And yeah, now let's check out the last place of today, the Forbidden City. Okay, and now the big moment. We are going to enter the Forbidden City. I'm currently walking towards the main gate. And yeah, we have a frozen lake here, which yeah looks very cool actually, very picturesque. Also, there are many Chinese girls very nicely dressed up with traditional clothes to take pictures here. Oh. Yeah, you see this a lot here. It's funny, actually, all around Asia, always at famous tourist attractions, you always see girls nicely dressed up. I remember I saw that a lot in Vietnam or in Thailand as well. So you can see Asian girls really like to take beautiful pictures. And yeah, let me introduce you to yet another super famous spot here in China. Here we go, the main entrance to the Forbidden City. I think actually this is the main entrance, I'm not 100% sure. And wow, this is already a great uh, view from here and a big moment for me. I always love it to be at super famous places. I think I said that already in this video. Okay, okay, see you. So yeah, you need to buy the tickets in advance. And then yeah, the ticket is connected uh, to your passport. Okay, the security tells me I need to follow them. I think my drone is a problem here. This needs to be kept by the police. Okay, so I cannot take the drone inside? Yeah. The drone stay here? You, you follow me. Okay, I think I, I need to leave the, the drone here and then I can probably pick it up later. Okay, so my drone is now inside the police van. The whole process took about five minutes. So if you want to save these five minutes, better don't take your drone to this place. But all good, I can pick it up later. And yeah, just quickly about the tickets. You need to buy the tickets online at least one day in advance, which I simply did by asking my hotel staff and then they booked the tickets via an app which literally took two minutes and then I paid the cash to them. The entrance price is 40 UN, so I paid it directly to my hotel staff and he booked the ticket via his phone for me. And yeah, now let's enter the forbidden city of China. Yeah, a few hundred years ago, this would not have been possible only if you are a member of the royal family. Hence the name the forbidden city, because for the regular people here, it was not allowed to enter this place. But wow, this is already a great moment. Whew. Yeah, if you have seen any documentaries about China before or any pictures of China, the chances are really high that you have seen this place before. And so have I. And now being at this place by myself, that feels great. Wow. If you are from China, let me know in the comments what is actually the most famous tourist spot or the most popular tourist spot to visit for the locals. Is it the, the square from earlier? Is it the Great Wall? Or is it this place or a totally different place? Whew. This is really great. Yeah, can you imagine how it must have felt for people like five, six, seven hundred years ago to stay here? and to look at the exact same buildings? And yeah, the area here is actually quite large. You can see it stretches out 
more and more into the distance. So this is a place where you can easily spend a few hours in if you're really looking into all the details, all the different buildings. This is easily a few hours worth of your time. And at the end of the area, we also have the Imperial Garden, which is quite a large garden area here. So probably the, the royal family or everyone belonging to the royals spent their free time in this garden area right here. And yet, to be honest, the, the whole complex here, everything looks so typical textbook Chinese, you know, all these ancient buildings here. I'm actually just thinking which place is the best for that one photo. Was it the main entrance or one of the squares in the middle? I mean, there are so many iconic uh, photo spots inside here. Yeah, maybe right. you can take the, the same picture for me. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, I found someone to take pictures for me. <laughs> so this is the, the spot I would like to have because now with the, the sky and the sun, it looks really nice. Sample. <laughs> yeah, something something like this. You're from Thailand? Yeah. yeah. Oh, somebody come? Oh, wow. Oh, you know. Somebody my cup? Wow. Where in Thailand are you from? Uh, Bangkok. Yeah, we both Bangkok. Are. And yeah, I do have the final picture now, so I'm very happy. And yeah, feel free to check out all the pictures I took today on my Instagram, Ken Abroad on Instagram. Feel free to also follow me there. Leave a comment that you are coming from the YouTube video. Okay, and they literally just closed the doors behind me. So what a great ending to the day and to end this video. And if you haven't seen my previous video, my high-speed train journey from Guangzhou all the way here to Beijing, then feel free to check it out right here. Stay healthy, stay positive, and then see you on the next episode. Ciao, guys.